Welcome everyone to the uh, Orifice Flow Meter. So we're gonna go over real quick on how to find your your uh, your coefficients, your k coefficient, c coefficient, b coefficient. Um, as you can see, we start first with the data that we were given from the lab, which is right here uh, in in red. And um, the data you're gonna be using to work for the calculations is after you convert them to SI units. And we convert them to SI units just to make it easy for you guys to do the calculations so we start first with the pressure that we were giving and the flow rate that we were giving and we quickly will just convert them to pascals and meters cubes per second and these are the units that we're going to work with to continue the calculations you can see i already calculated everything uh the mass flow rate the velocity the, uh, the reynolds number everything and you have the formulas over here you will have them as well available for you in the data. So everything is just plug and chug, it's really simple. You can just find the numbers, plug into the equation, and then once you have the Reynolds number and your C coefficient, and the C coefficient you can just you can see is just using the equation over here. These are the numbers that we're gonna use to find our K and our beta coefficient from figure 8.21, which will be available for you. So just uh, take a note that our Reynolds number is right now 41,000 and our C coefficient is 11.11479. And uh, your numbers might be slightly different based on your rounding and so on, but you should have uh, pretty similar numbers. So over here I have figure 8.21, as you can see. We have the Reynolds number on the x-axis. You can see it starts at 10,000. Then it's uh, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, and so on and so on. And on the y-axis, we have our flow coefficient k. And these blue lines that you see here, these are our different betas. So the way you find your coefficients is the, like this. So first, let me just get my ruler to make it easy. So we have our value of about 40, 41,000 Reynolds, which might be approximately somewhere about here. And you can see this is not really quite exact, so that, that will account for some, some errors that you will find in this lab. Just keep that in mind. So we have our already selected Reynolds, 41,000. And let's just say we're using a beta of uh, 0.6. All right. It's just, it's just, you can just make a guess. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Just, let's say we're choosing 0.6. Now, using that beta, we're going to move all the way to the left to find our k value. And you can see we are somewhere up below 0.66. So let's say that with our beta of 0.6, our corresponding k value is about 0 0.655. Let's just say like that. Looks about good. Okay. So. A formula that we need to, to keep in mind is k times beta squared is equal to the c coefficient that you already calculated. So once you multiply these two numbers, if they equal our c value, then we're good. If they do not, then we need to do the calculation again. So let's just do it. So 0 0.655 times 0.6 squared gives us, let's do the calculation real quick, you can do it as well right now in your calculator 0 0.655 times 0 0.6 square gives me a value of 0 0.2358 remember the c value that we have calculated above it was 0 0.11 479 uh, so we are still way uh, way above so what we do right now is then we go to a lower beta or a higher depending if your number was smaller or bigger so in this case since we are above the number we're going to go to a lower beta so let's try a beta of 0.5 and so beta equals 0 0.5 now and the corresponding k will be about 0 0.63 so let's do the calculation again so 0 0.63 times 0 0.5 square gives us 
let's do it real quick 163 times 0.5 gives me 0 0.1575 and you can see we're getting close but we're still off so let's try it then the lower not lower beta 0 0.4 let's see if we can do it this time so 0.4 so beta equals 0 0.4 our k will be about 0 0.615 or so so let's do calculation 0 0.615 times 0.4 square gives us 0 0.0984 so we are below we are now we have gone below the value so then we can say that our beta values fall somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5 so all we have to do now is keep on guessing and keep trying to interpolate so let's imagine there was another beta about here uh, between the 0.4 and the 0.5 and if we were to work there, what value would we get? So let's just make it like imagine here. So let's say we are at 0.45 beta. Let's see something like that. And our corresponding k. So this is where we start guessing, right? So let's say we're about 0.45. And our corresponding k will be about, you can see 62, 0 0.62. So let's try this. So 0 0.62 times 0 0.45 square gives us, so let's check it, 0 0.62 times 0 0.45. I get 0 0.1255. So we are well getting closer now. So as you can see, we can go a little bit up or higher. So I think we need this has to be then below 4.4 4. so let's say we're about here 0. 0.42 let's just say 0. 0.42 0. 0.43 or so that will give us a value a little bit lower than 0. 0.62 so you can see our k will not really vary much now from the 0. 0.62 0. 0.61 range has to be somewhere there so let's do it now so we get a beta equals 0. 0.40 our k will be 2.6195 uh, you can you can just keep adding decimals to make it a little more accurate and doing that we our value then becomes the following so 0.6195 times 0.42 square get 0 0.10927 so you can see we need to be as close as possible at least to the point 11.4 uh, we're in 1092 so we can just keep then switching so let's just try uh, different numbers we can keep uh, 0 0.62 0 0.42 5 and 5 you can just keep uh, adding decimals until you get it so 0 0.62 times 0.425 and here we got 4.1119875 that was 11.4 we're in 11.9 we're 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 good we're getting there so we got two of the three decimal places so I mean you can leave it here you can you want to be more accurate you can get to the third I really recommend to the third uh, of course I don't want you to do like 10 20 iterations uh, you can do about three to four iterations it's fine here I'm doing more just to show you how how to do it so you can get practice so let's say for two uh, five and K 0.6215 so let's just try these numbers now and we get 0.6215 times 0.425 square 0 
to now a little bit above so it's fine you can choose either or so from this you can uh, approximate that approximation you can really round up that your beta is about 0 0.42 uh, something in the range to 5 somewhere there and your k you can maybe round it up to 0 0.62 uh, 1 doesn't really matter so we just get these values so 0.425 and we'll just put it over here in the graph so our k we said it was 0 0.621 and our beta 0 0.425 so once we get our beta to get your orifice, the uh, diameter of the orifice, you just multiply your beta times the diameter of the pipe, which in this case was one inch. So by doing this, we get that the diameter of the orifice is 0.425 inches. So using this pressure, all the calculations, we got that the diameter of the orifice was 0.425 inches um, you can keep on doing this and get more something a little more accurate the and just repeat this the process then for the following pressure the 220 and uh, 110 do the same calculations you should get really approximate betas even though you get the numbers from the C coefficient uh, to the back might be a little bit different your k and your beta coefficient for all these three different pressures should be really close about the same they shouldn't be uh, changed really drastic they all should be between the 0 0.4 uh, 0 0.4 per, uh, 0 0.42 k coefficient as well so you just keep on doing that it's really simple and once you get that the actual orifice it's given there on blackboard and you will see how far away you were and do the error calculation right actual minus calculated over actual so you can find your error. So that's how we find the beta coefficient. I will post this on Blackboard and uh, hope it helps. If you have any questions, just let me know.